I try and teach people is obviously to try and get a bit more distance out of you know, the body, um, in your setup, things like that, looking at your numbers. Did you, you guys been on TrackMan and Flightscope and stuff before? Yeah, do you know what all the numbers kind of mean at a certain point? Obviously you know what club speed and ball speed is and obviously stuff like that, but what we tend to look for uh, in long drive terms is number one pretty much away from ball speed and, and club speed obviously, but uh, spin rates. Um, spin being the probably the biggest killer for distance. Uh, you saw what you saw this morning in terms of uh, what I, you know, warming up this morning, the high spinners with the driver, uh, you know, spinning up into the wind, carrying nowhere, uh, rolling obviously nowhere at all. Um, and that's just, that's just down to spin, but obviously spin is, is directly related to you know, how we hit the ball, where we hit the ball in the face, club paths, everything. So uh, let's just have a little bit of a warm up here again while we get a new driver. <laughs> there you go, there's a low spinning free wood, high launch, about 360. Would you hit it like that on the golf course? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why, does that seem fast? Or was it just a terrible shot? <laughs> what are you trying to say? Oh, it's, uh, golf here. Yeah. Now, this, this actually would, would probably be my keep it in play club. Uh, this almost goes just as far as the driver. These, these free wood technologies now, you know, drivers are actually governed by a bit of limitations. In terms of how hot they can make the face and certain stuff and loss, but um, you know, three woods now just they go a long way. Um, what we kind of look for, like we said, with spin and um, you know the things that we look for, especially for long drivers, spin being the biggest one. Spin is obviously re related to again, like I said, how you how well you hit the ball. Let's say we all hit the ball out of the middle of the face, but we're spilt, still spinning it too much. Okay, that's when we check the loft of the driver. Um, with these drivers now we can obviously move around uh, center of gravity and, and where we want the MRY and stuff like that so that helps but number one key factor for us uh, in long drive is get a driver here is obviously spin of the, uh, the loft of the driver now my standard one which is coming back in a minute is eight and a half degrees um, turned down to seven and a half roughly in that sort of area you guys are probably using the tens to the nines tens something like that now there's a big key factor here. If I, if I was to tee this ball up, a proper tee. Do I, everyone tee the ball up nice and high, or does everyone kind of keep it a bit low? How does that look to you guys? Low. That's a low one. That's good. How does, how does that one look? Horrible. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> if you guys try to hit that, what's going to happen? Sky. You're going to sky roof it, right? 90, everyone knows that as well. You guys, even without me, even without even trying to hit that ball, you probably know you're either going to sky it or straight underneath it, right? Now everyone knows knows that because everyone kind of hits down on the ball. Now with angle of attack with an iron, that's great when we hit down. When you see your track man numbers and stuff like that, if you see that with a driver, then you're in the wrong you're in the wrong area, right? With a driver, we want to go from a downwards angle of attack to an increase or positive angle of attack. Um, if we can, just without going too specific and too detailed here. These drivers got what's called static loft on them. Okay, so it's on being a long drive on is very low. What that changes that impact and that's called dynamic loft. Okay, so you basically add loft to the driver at impact. Now let's say this dynamic loft on this is maybe 15 I'd say for me when I'm when I'm going full tilt at it. If I was to have an angle of attack on the way down here, okay, this difference here is called what's known as spin loft or a better word for it compression. Right, we're all here we can press the ball, got to squeeze the ball get the most out of it. Now if I've, I'm 15 there, 5 down let's say, which is a bad which is a bad swing for an amateur driver, this is a difference of 20, which is a big number for spin loft, right? But what we want to do is keep the dynamic loft the same, but we want to bring our angle of attack up. You can see when it starts going both compresses more, we're going to get more uh, ball speed out of, uh, out of the club, we're going to get uh, lower spinning, which is what we want, obviously that's a big one, we want to go through the air better, not rising up and spinning and stopping dead. What we do with nine. Okay, we want it penetrating all the way. So things we try and do when we do that, obviously, is number one, hence the high T, we tee the ball up. Okay, we move it forward in the stance. We're all right-handed into it. Pretty much all right-handed, which is good. Um, center of the golf swing for a right-handed golfer is the left shoulder. Okay, so we always balance, so we always go from the left shoulder. So we always tell someone to get a mirror or a camera or someone with a trained eye, PJ Pro. Uh, to have a look at your swing, 
Now, a lot of guys would see it in there, kind of lined up with their chest, looking at that forward in the stance, but what we do for golf and for distance, we move it forward kind of in the crease, is, is I would say where you need to start. Then as you go further and further, if you want to go you know, more and more, increase the distance and stuff like that, you go a little bit more further outside that left shoulder. So this here, like I say, is the kind of center point for the swing. Um, that, that, is, that is the mark that we go off. So never go by your stance, because the stance will be wide, could be narrow. Um, always get, like I say, get a mirror in front of you, get a camera. Just make sure your ball position is right for a start. So number one, tee the ball up. Number two, move it forward in the stance a little bit. Um, and in order to reach that, let's just go to extremes. If I wanted to reach that driver there, I'm not going to go this way, which a lot of people would try and think and do. We'll try and lean over it, get even worse, get even steeper on the ball. What we do is we put a spine tilt in there, okay? Or spine axis tilt is what it's called. And that just kind of looks like that, which is simple enough, okay? That, again, is going to promote that upwards angle attack, that upward strike, okay? Get the ball launching nice and high with low spin. Um, that's kind of where we want to be. Can we get the driver back? Any driver? Is there any driver? No more heads. <laughs> we use the free wood for the sake of it. So again, that's kind of teed up quite high for a free wood. Okay, so this, this, this aim still applies with a free wood. It's even probably a better drill to do with a free wood because you know, we've got a lot of loft on here. We want to try and maximise that compression, that spin loft. Okay, so balls forward in the stance. Spine tilts in there. We go, go ahead and make a swing. A bit of a high spot, I think.